Welcome back to Overthinking Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Pi hole inside of Proxmox. But first, a little bit about networking. If we take a look at my OpenSense setup, we can see that I have quite a few interfaces set up, and these are using different VLANs so that I can separate traffic on my network to more easily control things. For the DNS subnet here, I'm using VLAN number four. So for this tutorial, I am gonna show you how to set up PyHole in Proxmox with a specific VLAN assigned to it. Uh, I'll point out those steps. So if you wanna follow along without VLANs, you can also do that. First thing to look at is my network switch configuration. Now this is going to vary depending on your network switch. For this case, I have port four here. This is the port that the Proxmox interface is connected to. So the interface that we use to actually access the Proxmox cluster. You can see that for the first VLAN, which is the management VLAN, we need to access the node on. I have that set as unmanaged, or sorry, untagged. For all of the other VLANs, I have it set for tagged. Coming over to Proxmox, the first thing to look at is the network configuration. Like I showed in my previous videos, I have two network interfaces that are strictly for an OpenSense install, and we're accessing Proxmox currently through this bridge connection zero. Note that on all of these, VLAN aware is set to no. So none of these interfaces need to be VLAN aware for us to use VLANs with our virtual machines. Creating the virtual machine then is just like any other virtual machine. We can give it a name. For the image, I'm gonna be using Ubuntu Server 22.04. And then when we get to networking, what we're gonna do here is select VMBR0. It should be the default one. Vert IO paravirtualization is correct. And then for VLAN tag, we want this to match whatever VLAN we want this assigned to. So here I'm gonna put VLAN four. If you don't wanna use VLANs when setting this up, you can simply leave that blank. The rest of the setup is gonna be the same. Once the system has finished creating that virtual machine, we can click start. And then we'll just walk through a normal Ubuntu server installation. We can see when we get to the networking page that this system has been assigned an IP address by my DHCP server, in this case, OpenSense. And if we look at the DHCP range for my DNS subnet, we can see that that matches the assigned IP address. So this was properly tagged with the correct VLAN in order to get that 168.33 subnet. For storage, the one thing I'm gonna change is I'm going to set the default path here to include all of the available storage so that I don't have any of this free space remaining. Make sure you pick a secure password for this. I will be installing OpenSSH. Because we have console access, it's not strictly necessary, but being able to copy and paste makes this a lot easier. Now we just drink coffee and wait for it to finish. Once Ubuntu server is finished installing, we can go reboot, and then we can head over to hardware and remove the CD slash DVD that shows up as the installation media. The next thing we need to do is make sure that this VM has a static IP address. Now, the way I'm gonna handle this is come back over to my OpenSense router. This is gonna vary depending on what router you're using. But under leases, I'm going to find that device that's connected. 
In this case, I named it Pi Hole, and we can see it has the same IP address that it showed during the installation process. And I'm going to give this a static IP. So in this case, I just need to click Add, and then I'm going to give it an IP address that's just outside the range of the assignable IP addresses. Coming back over to the server then, we can log in using the username and password that we set up earlier. Uh, by default, you will not have NetTools installed, so the commonly used ifconfig command won't uh, function. I end up installing NetTools on basically everything, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. And all this lets me do is run the command ifconfig and I can see what IP address this system is currently at. In this case, it's still at the .101 IP address. I can change this by doing sudo ifconfig and then I'm gonna do the interface name ens, is that one eight? down. Then I'm going to run the same thing, but with up at the end. That just takes the interface offline and then brings it back online. Now we should have that new static IP address that I configured in OpenSense. Now for the rest of this tutorial, I actually want to connect to this over an SSH connection. The reason is I want to be able to copy and paste commands in. There's lots of applications that you can use to SSH into things. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the Windows command prompt because it finally has SSH capabilities, putting it on par with every other operating system. Uh, if you're following along on a Linux or a Mac install, these commands will be the same in command prompt or terminal or whatever the equivalently named thing is. So we'll do SSH. We're gonna enter the username that we set for this system at and then the IP address. In this case, it's the static IP address I just set. Enter the password when prompted. And now the very first thing I'm gonna do is switch users. When we install PyHole, it's best to do it as the root user. So I'm gonna do sudo su for switch user root and then use our password again. For the PyHole installation, all we need to do is run this one command provided by PyHole. I'll link to this basic install page in the video description. Pasting that command in, we hit enter, and now we just wait. Once we get to this page here, we can hit enter. This is just a warning that says it's important to make sure you have a static IP address, which we already took care of. So I'm gonna hit continue. For the moment here, uh, we can select any one of these we want, though I am gonna show you how to configure uh, Unbound at the end of this video. I'm gonna click yes for block lists, yes for admin interface. And then for logging, I'm gonna select show everything. Um, there could potentially be privacy concerns here if you want somebody else to be able to manage PyHole, but not necessarily see what all the traffic is going through it. In my case, I'm gonna be the only one looking at this, so I'm perfectly fine being able to see what all that traffic is. Perfect, once it's done, we can simply navigate to the listed IP address. So I'm gonna do that in a different window here. For the login information, by default, we'll have a randomly generated password. Before logging in, I'm actually gonna go ahead and change that. We can do that by running pihole-a-p. I recommend setting this to something that is a proper secure password, not admin or admin123, that's also not secure. We should now be able to log in with our new password and have functioning PyHole. 
Now, in order to actually have your devices use this, you'll need to configure in whatever your router is, the DNS server. You can also do an IP address assignment for just one device. In Windows, if we open settings, we can go to the properties for our network and we can go to edit and then we can enter a preferred DNS. What this lets you do is it lets you set up a pie hole potentially on a network where you don't have control over the router and still point your device at that pie hole, even though nothing else on the network will use it. Now that you have pie hole installed, there's one important configuration change we should make. If you go to settings under API and web interface, we can change what the interface looks like. And I'm gonna make sure dark reader is disabled. This is obviously the best interface. So make sure it's set to the Star Trek theme and then you're good to go. Joking aside, any of the themes will do. I just didn't know this existed for a long time, so I wanted to share it. The next configuration change I'm gonna make is to head over to DNS. And by default, this is on allow only local requests. Because I have devices on different subnets, this can occasionally confuse Pi-hole. So I'm gonna set this to respond only on interface ENS18. Uh, this is the interface with the assigned IP address from OpenSense. Uh, this can be potentially risky if for some reason your router were to allow traffic from the internet through to your pie hole. Uh, but in my case, I'm gonna trust that I have OpenSense configured properly and that's not gonna be an issue. And this will prevent problems with devices on different subnets trying to access pie hole. The next change we're gonna make is to set up Unbound. Now, Pihole has a very helpful article on setting up Unbound that we're gonna follow in this tutorial and I'll link to down below. The first thing we're gonna do is coming back to our SSH terminal here is simply install Unbound. But first for this one, I am gonna switch back to the user I set up. In general, don't do things in root unless you have to. Now we can see when Unbound tried installing, we got this conflict error here. And that's because both Unbound and Pi-hole want to use port 53 by default. Now to resolve this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this configuration file here. So to do that, I'm just gonna do sudo nano and then that file path. And then I'm gonna copy everything that they have in this default config and paste that in here. Control O and enter to write out to the file. Now if we take a look at it, we should be able to see everything that was in that copy and paste. Now there's a couple things in this configuration file that can be changed. Uh, for example, you can change how many threads this has access to if you are doing this for say a larger business installation. Uh, for our use case though, we don't need to change anything. The only thing to pay attention to is this port number. What this is doing is it's telling Unbound to work on port 5335 instead of port 53. With that, we can simply copy and paste the commands to restart Unbound. These are just standard service restart commands. Then if we look at the Unbound service, we can see that it's now running. We can test to make sure Unbound is running by seeing if we can resolve the IP address of pihole.net. Assuming everything works correctly, you should see an IP address for pihole.net come up. Now to configure pihole to use Unbound, all we need to do is set a custom DNS server and we're gonna set this to 127.0.0 dot one and then instead of colon which is commonly used for port numbers we need a pound sign or hashtag or number sign or whichever you prefer and then we'll be using that port 5335 we can uncheck the other dns servers if we want to only use unbound 
and select save. To confirm that everything's working, I've set my desktop here to send all of its DNS lookups to Pihole. I've got internet access, and if I come here and refresh, we can see my desktop IP address, and we can see that it's answered by localhost, meaning the same machine running Pihole, on that port 5335. So that was setting up a virtual machine with a VLAN tag in Proxmox and installing Pihole and Unbound. In the next video, I'm going to look at setting up LAN cache while still using Pihole as our default DNS server for all the devices on our network.